What's going on, everybody? Mike Stadler here. Carl Bethke with you. Back with the Obsession Podcast. Carl. Mike. How you doing? Uh, I'm good. We're working on your property. Yeah. Getting stuff done, my friend. That's right. Took a little break to do some podcasts. Uh, I had one. What do you got? And uh, that's an irritating one. Uh-oh. I'm, I was irritated when I was told this. Uh-oh. So <laughs> I, had a, I had a guy message me mm-hmm. and then he tried to put his facts on there too about he's like the only reason you guys kill big bucks is just because you have a good spot what every year yeah that's oh, why i can see why you're irritated yeah. my if you can see right now my ears are red yeah i have my ear, earphones on so yeah. and uh the only reason we shoot deer big yeah big bucks every year is because you have a good spot huh well, he's right. We got good spots. Yeah, right, we do. That's the benefit we that have. That is the benefit that we have. And I, I yeah. you know, I, I ain't gonna touch on that. That comment is one of the dumbest comments I've probably ever heard in my life. I've heard some dumb ones. Yeah. But <clears throat> this, you know, shooting a good animal every year, buck, whatever you use, starts the second that animal hits the ground for the next year. Oh, yeah. That's when it starts. Because when we're done hunting, we are immediately brainstorming on what we're going to do with our properties, for one thing. Like, nobody set these properties up for us no. at all. In fact, my property um, had cattle on it. Yep. And it grazed cattle. It was fence lined off, there was uh, internal fenced in pen, rock walls built in it, uh, 2,000 pounds of scrap dumped in this corner up here. Um, yeah, yeah, damn, oh god, it was just prime deer hunting land prime, when I got it. Prime whitetail land. You know what I mean? You just get, get, better. get in there and hunt it. Yeah, Good. that's what you do. Build a house. It pop stand up. Yeah. And I got in there and started shooting big bucks. Every, every year. You know, and this, it amazes me that people think this. Yeah, you do kill big bucks because you have a good spot. But you, you make the spots good spots. are made yeah. to be better. And a lot of thought is put into it. And we could, you know, entries, exits, where's your food, where's your bedding going to be, you know, how are you getting to this stand, how are you getting out of this stand, yeah. uh, structure, it, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Yeah, there's a lot to lay out <coughs> a property, a lot to set in tree stands, a lot to, number one, a lot to, I guess the biggest thing, entrance and exit, you know, if you're educating your deer, your spot's screwed. Mm-hmm. And when you have small properties like we do, you can't screw it up because if you screw it up, you're blowing all the deer off the property. Because it doesn't take very long for a deer to clear 40 acres. No. So, you know, that being a stupid ass statement that that guy made all the way around, you know, it, number one is probably a jealousy thing. Yeah. You know, he watches the shows and he listens. Hey, thanks for watching. We do appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, most of the time, um, I don't know, most of those people that say stuff like that don't realize how much work's involved in it. Yeah. And then like Mike was saying, you know, it's not just us always setting up our property, you know. Every morning both of us go to the gym, okay, we're working out, getting up in the morning. We do our regular job because we both have regular jobs. We both own businesses, so we run those. Um, I think success is based off of how much effort anything or how much effort you put forth on anything whether it be business or whether it be hunting or anything like that so you know you know it, you don't i've never been to a anywhere that i think is just a good spot because you can get to what you think is a what his description would be a good spot and then realize well in this good spot there is actually a really good spot, right? You know, and you're always transitioning that throughout the year, you know. And as for us, making our good spots even better, that happens consistently. I mean, today we're doing it. Yep. You know, we're we're building transition on your property. Yep. So it actually emphasizes the deer movement that we want, yep. and our stands are already located. Yeah, we are, we're 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 moving the deer where we want them to go off of the evaluations that we've made 
over the past few years. Yeah. Um, so we're adding structure, um, hinge some trees, cut some trees down, uh, move brush, brush piles. I mean, lots of things that most people don't do at all. Right. Um, you know, utilizing where stands are. Um, we set up on my property a whole nother location where we're going to be morning hunting mm -hmm. for when the two of us are here this fall. Um, and we're redesigning a whole corner to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's things like that. Well, yeah, that's, <clears throat> I mean, here's an example. Uh, Mike and I were out at my place a couple weeks back. We reassessed the entire property. We're pulling tree stands out because it's just not a, a good spot to hunt. You just can't get there. Yeah, we thought it would be a decent spot, and you, <clears throat> you can't. You can't hunt it. It's impossible to get to. So we're increasing our percentages by pulling opportunity away from us, but creating more opportunity in other spots due to knowing what the deer are doing movement-wise. And then we're emphasizing that, like we are here at Mike's, with with some transition changes that we're going to do uh, some hinge cutting. Yeah, we're not going to put one stand in. No, we're on my property. Yeah, no, not one. No, nope. um, we're going to switch some out because they're old and they need to be switched out. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. We're emphasizing what's already there, what we know our deer movement patterns are. Um, our entrances and exits are huge. We're huge on that. Um, we know our winds. We know how our properties lay out. Uh, you know, we're assessing our food plots, what we're going to do for that, uh, our grasses that are going in, if we're planting corn, if we're planting brassicas, um, we're putting some more trees in on my property, we're moving trees on Carl's property, yeah, we're moving them. That is correct. A lot of them. So, the culmination of 365 days comes down to that day when Carl takes his buck and I take my buck. Or the five seconds of yeah, fame. Yeah, for the five seconds of fame. Yeah. So, and it's it's a lifetime thing for us. And it's an everyday thing for us. So, and, and I'll say it to anybody, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you've killed, you're not going to outwork me. No. You're not. You might get an animal, and I might not, but you're not going to outwork me. And I'm not going to quit. And I don't care, I know who you are who said it to me. Yeah. Like any day, if you want to go out and do anything, because it's the way I am. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'll bury you. Because this is what I'm going to do. That's a know? fact. And I'm going to succeed at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what I got to do, what I got to sacrifice, what I got to put into it, it's going to happen. And that's where a lot of people are going to fail and they're going to quit. Because your mind's going to quit way before your body is. That's a fact. You know, so if, if you let things out in front of you distract you and get away from it, you're not going to be successful. Never will. You know, it, it, it and I'm not gonna go off sound like I'm some, you know the best guy in the world, but I, I'm just driven. Carl is driven. So to say things like that to us, like you don't know us or you're not listening, for one thing, because we're two of the guys that want to see people succeed. And I'm gonna tell you what, there's not a lot of those people out there. No. If you think there are, you're wrong. But like I, I really enjoy watching people shoot animals. And that's you why know? you know we get it's, we get pictures for people <clears throat> who listen to us all the time, and I'll show you guys some of the pictures here. Yep. On the on the show, but awesome, and we are happy for every individual. They'll they'll tell us stuff, you know. Well, I took your guys' suggestion on this, or I watched how you did your structure on your land, and I had a spot that was kind of like that, so I did the same thing. And you just like you guys said, that buck came along that structure or that tree yeah. line, and I zipped him at like ten yards, yeah, you know, awesome. biggest deer of their life. Yep. Or younger kids that watch us and are inspired by that, where you know they watch us and and you know they wanna they wanna go out and be successful and they're sending us pictures of their first deer or their dad sending us picture of their first deer, you know, and that's important to us too. And you can criticize us all you want, we don't give a shit. <laughs> it's that simple. I mean, you know it. it if if we if we listened to every hater out there or took it personally when somebody told us they didn't agree with us but said it in a very the rude way, you know it is what it is. You're always gonna have people that yeah, disagree. You're gonna have haters no matter what you do. And you know, if you have haters, you're doing something right. That's the way I look at it. 
and uh, people are paying attention to you. Yep. Um, you know, and we're successful because of the work we do, and it, it, it's the bottom line. You know, I didn't I didn't buy my property and come here and just start knocking out big bucks. No. And Carl's is the same way, and it's every year it's working. Things we've put in that we thought were we've ripped back out. That don't work. With it. It's not a good idea. We're doing something different, and it happens. And if you, you know, and like I said, we help set up properties. Yeah. So, and it happens. And there's there's not a property management company out there that's going to come in and it's going to be like, this is exactly what you got to do. This is going to work 100. percent Right. It doesn't always happen. It can be a great idea, but maybe it just doesn't work there. Right. And, and that happens. If you guys if you guys need us or would like us to come. You know, get a hold of us right here in the comments, or you guys can get a hold of us at rushoutdoorswi.com uh, or rushoutdoorswi at gmail also, and uh, drop us a note, and we're more than willing to come and help uh, help you guys lay out properties um, for a fee. Obviously, we'll have our fees uh, up online here shortly. I'll let you guys know how much a day it costs and what we do and how we uh, come in and assess your property and then help give suggestions. We can lay it out, mm -hmm. um, show you guys where we'd be putting stuff in. Entrance, exit routes, tree stands, all of that stuff. And you know, remember too, when we're, we're talking about, you know, setting these properties up for you to be successful, it's always processes. You know, it, there's not a lot of people out there that can go in back. I want to do all of that. Yeah, no. You got to do it in phases. And you got to have equipment. If you don't have equipment, you have to, either rent it and operate it yourself, buy it, or pay somebody to come in and do it for you. And uh, sometimes that can be rather expensive. Yeah, it's expensive, um, it is. I mean, I, I got, you know, we got Tom, he's working right now, yep. as we're doing a podcast, yeah. you know, but I'm paying him, Right. you know, and we set up what we wanted him to do today, that's what he's doing, yep. you know, we're, we're getting some podcasts in, then we're gonna be back out doing our parts of it, you know, but he's got the equipment here. Yep. So, you know, they, it's a lot of work. Yeah, there's and at the end of the day, when you're successful, it all was for everything. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't go by the wayside. And, it, and if at the end of the year, if you're not successful, you shouldn't be. If you put your time in and you went forward and you did everything you thought you were going to do and you tried and you kept going and you you know made plans and changed up things to do and it didn't work out, it just didn't work out. Right. Doesn't necessarily mean you failed. So everybody thinks you failed. You know, whatever. Right. The other part I'll add to that part where Mike was just talking about that, not even getting to the failure part of it. Whenever you're on your land and you're doing exactly what Mike was talking about, where you set everything up and you're learning, the deer are telling you something. If you're paying attention to what's happening, whether you're paying attention to your game cameras, you're paying attention to, you know, when you're in the tree and you're seeing deer movement in a certain location, well, ask yourself, why is that deer moving? Why are they there and why am I here? Mm -hmm. And how do I get either me to there or them to me? Right. There's always an answer there. You should always be learning. And that's called woodsmanship. And that will make you a better hunter. But throughout that process, you know, you're going to be able to get better by watching and let the deer tell you where and where to be and when to be there. I mean, heck, we've set tree stands off of what we've learned over two years of watching deer movement at certain times on cameras. And then that third year, we killed a good deer. Yep. You know, it's not... It's, you can learn just as much during the season, after the season, you know, winter, during the winter. Um, you know, I like to go out in the winter on my property after we get snow, especially. Yep. Um, for a, after a couple of days, you can go in and you can see where they're moving. Look at the trails they're using. So if they're using them now, they were probably using them during the season. Mm -hmm. And I'll take little marker flags, yep. I'll stick them in. And we did this a couple years back. We showed it. Yep. Um, and we went in and we built a bunch of structure around those flags. This year we killed two bucks oh, we from did. what I did two years ago by marking some of those trails. Correct. Put in water, put in stands, put in structure. So it works. And it wasn't because we just went out there and got a stand. Right. I mean, yeah. it isn't because we had a good spot. I yeah. can tell you that. It's because we made good yeah, spots. We didn't have a good spot. We had a great spot yeah. that we built. Yep. You know, And it's the people I know that consistently take deer are because they put their time in. 
Hundred percent. And they know their land or they know the property they hunt, whether they own it or not, doesn't matter. A lot of people have leases yep. that they take care of, which we both have had yep. over the years too. And it's the same thing, it doesn't matter if you own it, you lease it, you're going on public, it doesn't matter. You gotta know the property. Hundred percent. You know, the only thing on public, you can't do anything with it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's true. But the aspect of being able to figure everything out comes into play the longer you hunt and more more experience you get, you know. Yeah. We've been doing it quite a few years and we've been pretty successful. So, you know, we're more than willing to help you guys out. Yeah. And I mean, we don't know everything. No. You know, and anybody out there that says they know everything, you know, if you're looking for some way to help you set up your land, you know, a lot of guys, you know, they're gonna look at, oh, this big name and I know that big name. That's cool. And I'm not saying they're not smart. No. But you're paying them now for their name. Just yeah. remember that. And I'm going to tell you, a couple of hicks like us, we're doing the same thing. And we've been doing it for years, you know. We can, we can show you walls that produce so, positive you know, At some point, we're going to do that. And, and you know, I've, I've seen that on some of these guys that sub these land, land and they do this big frame of all their deer on this wall. You know, we're looking for a barn big enough to put all of ours on. And I'm not being conceited. I'm just saying, we're gonna, we want to do that. We want to take pictures of us back. Here. This is what we've done. You know, we want to help you. That's the thing. It's not a bragging thing, Chris. We want yeah. to help you. I want you to send a picture to me or to Carl. Right. Be like, dude, look at I this. Shot this. You know, you guys came in. That would be epic. It would for be. us. You know, we want to see that. Yeah. You know, kill a bigger deer than we kill our deer. Be even better. It would be because it makes us look better. We'd be we'd be you happy know. for you for sure. I mean, so it's you know, if you're really looking at getting into that and you really want to kill. A, a quality buck every year, we can help you. You know, guys that have comments like this, I love them. Yep. Because it gives us stuff to talk about. Yeah, it gives us it gives us incentive. Because all you're doing is creating more drive for us. Yep. And then, you know, today, the same guy here, it's 2 o'clock here today. Um, you know, we've both been up since 4 30. Yep. Um, working out, coming here. We were filming in the woods, um, doing a bunch of land improvements today. Yeah. Filming podcast, we're gonna be back out in the woods again, and guess where we're gonna be tomorrow morning? Same thing. Yeah, same thing again. <laughs> Where's this guy? He's probably sitting on his couch, you know, watching a basketball game yeah. or de or deer hunting videos. Yeah, Criti <laughs> criti criticizing somebody else that just shot a quality you know, deer. <laughs> you you want us to help you out? We can help you out. Trust me. You know, we you can look at you know, like I said, Carl put up a bunch of pictures of, of guys that we've helped in some way get their deer. You know, people that hunt with us. They know. Yeah. Um, we're gonna push you. We're gonna push you way harder than you can push yourself if you're home with us. Trust me. Give yourself a pump of uh, oranges. <laughs> that's a fact. And you know, we expect greatness. We demand it, and we want success. You know, so that that's at the end of the day, what you want. Shoot. Driving yourself. Agreed. You know, or setting your property up, which is us. That would be us. <laughs> so there you go, a little commercial on that one. Yeah, right? uh, uh, but, uh, you know, to people who say, like this guy said, you know, you have just good areas to hunt. Good areas are made. They're not just there. Um, you know, there's decent areas in hunt in public land that are people consider good areas. Trust me, if you could enhance it, it would be better. Yeah. Well, you, uh, you, you can know, always make things better. You gotta remember these this stuff. If you guys are watching this on TV, these people where they're going to all these outfits and stuff. That, that land's all set up. Right. They're doing what we're doing here, and those guys are paying to go in and hunt. Yeah, yeah. they're putting them in a stand. There's going to be deer there. Yeah. Or and this buck or that buck. That's what they're setting it up to do. Yeah. If you're paying me yeah. three thousand dollars to put you on a deer, I'm gonna put you I'll on put a deer. Deer. Trust me. Now, whether or not you're successful, yeah. that's how. That's that's your hunt at that point, but you're gonna see deer. Mm -hmm. You know, we do it every year on our properties when we bring people to hunt with us. Yep. Whether it's you know uh, a partner of Rush Outdoors, some of the people come and hunt with us, or you know our good friends that come and hunt with us. Yep. You know, I'm not gonna tell you to go sit a stand where I expect you not to see an animal. Right. You know, <laughs> so that's how it works. Um, we appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate you guys. Uh, leaving comments, yep. even when they're negative. We want to hear what you guys have yep. to say. Even better. We'll even, take them in. That's true. 
You know, I don't mind being criticized, especially if it's constructive criticism. You know, it makes you a better person. Yeah, if you're just gonna say you guys suck, well, whatever. Yeah. You know, probably. Trust, trust but, me, you're gonna yeah. you're gonna get a sarcastic answer and ixnade any. It almost hurt my feeling. No, okay. no, you didn't even got one. I did once. No, well, maybe. <laughs> but like I said, we appreciate you guys listening. If you get a chance, want to subscribe to the channel? Hit the re re Reaper. Hit the hit the hit the, hit the Reaper. Hit the Reaper in the lower right hand corner. Uh, if you want to listen to just the podcast, you can check us out at rss.com, Amazon, Spotify, Google, Apple, iHeart, YouTube. Check your pretty faces out right here at YouTube. If you want to listen or check us out, give us some inter information or talk to us on Instagram. You can also get a hold of us there at Rush Outdoors WI or The Obsession Podcast Hunting. If you guys put, uh, if you want to get a hold of us there for any of the land management stuff, you guys can just leave a message there at Rush Outdoors WI, and we'll get right back to you. Yeah. Um, or if any of you follow us on Facebook, just shoot us a message, you know, yeah. some contact info, and we can get a hold of you and, and uh, kind of go through the process. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. Have a good day. Yeah, buddy.